What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go ahead and cover a quick and easy DIY project when it comes to water polishing. Uh, this is gonna work if you have something like this. Uh, these are one of those kind of stick on back aquarium filters. Uh, they usually have like these two sponges on the each side. Uh, this is one of my old ones. I just wanted to reuse it just because I had it laying around. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try and fit this bottle here on this side and then this bottle here on this side. And that way I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to pretty much fit the length of this. And then um, this will allow us to use polyfill. And I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it into the bottles and then attach them onto this device right here. So if you are deciding to use this for your aquarium, um, just be mindful that you have to replace the polyfill when it gets dirty because once it gets too dirty, it's not gonna do anything and it's not gonna uh, benefit your aquarium at all. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. So if you have one of these, it's most likely gonna look like this. Uh, it usually has a sponge over here, but I lost the other side. So I uh, definitely can't use this anymore, but I'm still gonna use this sponge to accommodate this project. So what you're gonna need is a filter like this, which you can get on Amazon or eBay or something. It's like really cheap, five bucks. And the good thing about this is it has um, two, two inlets and then one outlet. And then uh, depending on how strong you want, you can lift the outlet up and down and then this will kind of uh, increase the vacuum power. Another thing you're gonna need is like really thin bottles. Like right here, I have these Kirkland sparkling water bottles. And uh, the reason why I like this is because they're really thin and I can fit them in this system without it um, messing with the middle pipe and whatnot. So I can have this here and I can have this one here like this and it'll fit perfectly. This is not the world's nicest looking filter, but if you're looking for performance and stuff, this can work uh, very good. So what you wanna do first is take the filter out and make sure that you know how big these holes are. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you drill the correct hole size for this, right? So as you can see, I need to make a hole that's about that big. Let me go ahead and get a drill real quick. And if you're wondering, the filter's gonna be going right here along this edge of the tank. Let me go ahead and get this drill so we can drill our hole. All right, so we got my drill. And what we're gonna do now is drill the hole. You guys always wanna do this in the, like, the safest way you can. So let me go ahead and get like a random box or something. So you have your two bottle caps. Just wanna make sure everything fits here. Also, you can do that thing I recommended where you can also do this, where you can kind of sandwich the two in between each other. That way you know for sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. Here it is, the other one. So now that your bottles are kind of snug like this, you know for sure that they're not going anywhere. And that's the thing though, that that's how easy this filter is. Um, it's just, just as simple as drilling a hole in the bottle cap. And drilling this. And that's that. So that's pretty much your attachment when it comes to um, the polyfill and we're going to go ahead and cut the bottles to fit and uh, at least look kind of okay. There's probably a cleaner way for you to do this but uh, I don't really care how it looks I just need to polish my water so. Damn that's so ugly. All right, cool. Wow, that's like definitely not the straightest cut ever. Let me see. It's fine though. Man, that's how ugly. Whatever. The reason why I like using Kirkland is because uh, the whole side isn't like adhesive, so it's not super dirty, see? Bam, done. Then I'll go ahead and use alcohol and wipe off the rest of the other stuff. 
I think I'm gonna change it up. At first I had them sandwiched in between the lip of this and this, but now instead I'm just gonna push them all the way down and have them go like that, you know what I mean? And push this down like this. And then I, fa I found a different way to keep it secure that I'll show you right now. Next I went ahead and cut the sponge. So I went ahead and cut this portion off and this is what I'm gonna use to hold down the bottles and keep them straight. You can go ahead and use a pen or something and push them down. This is going to go ahead and keep your bottles straight while they're in the tank. Yeah, man, look at that. Yeah, let me go ahead and cut this one. There's definitely, you can definitely use scissors, but um, this is kind of like a quick DIY, so uh, you can definitely make this look a lot cleaner. I just. I just don't really care how it looks, I just want it to be in the tank. Cool, so it's like that. So I'm pretty much using the sponge to keep the bottles kind of like straight. So as you can see, they're pretty much in there right now and then they, they can't really come out because that lip is there. So, and the thing is, you're gonna be in your tank so much uh, replacing the polyfill anyway, so all you gotta do to restabilize it is to just push these sponges down. So another thing that you can do when it comes to stability is, is you, can you see like there's like these little holes in the middle core of the filter. Uh, most of the time filters come with like these little holes that's drilled so the sponge can uh, suck in water and stuff. So what you can do is you can go ahead and cut a piece of zip tie and then stuff them in that hole and they'll hold down the, the sponge itself. That way it's not permanent and it'll be easy for you to take out the sponge uh, without tearing apart your filters. What we're gonna do is push these sponges down make sure that they're nice and stable then i'm gonna go ahead get some polyfill so this is the polyfill i use uh i bought a somewhat big bag and it's still full so um you can get one bag and it'll last you for a long time i had this for years now uh, i still haven't used it all but if you have a bigger tank, um, you can probably use all this in one shot. There, so. Here. That. more. The reason why you want to break this up is because um, you don't want it to be all clogged up in one end and uh, it's easier for you to distribute it like that. Like that, like that. And that's about it. Sick. So that's it right there. Let's go ahead and open up the tank. Wait, hold on, let me turn on the lights real quick. I can take. Cool. And I'll go ahead and turn this up too. So my tank's not too dirty. I just did a water change, so we shouldn't really see too much activity on the filter. But um, I just wanted to add this because I, I was thinking about it the other day, and um, my tank isn't as clear as I want it to be, so it's not that bad. Now I gotta figure out which one I want to take out. So I'm gonna take this guy out. I actually might transfer this to my goldfish tank, so I want to keep this upright like that. Put this like right here or something. I'll put it right here for now. Always take out these little strands. You don't want this kind of like floating around in the tank. That would be all bad. Oh. So it's going to float a little bit. So it's not too bad that I've taken out that second sponge filter because uh, I was only using them for extra biofiltration. But as you can see here, I have a 
whole sump of K1, and I'm pretty sure there's enough bio filtration for everyone in here. So I'm not too worried about that. I was more worried about my water polishing, so that's why I went ahead and swapped that one out for this one right here. Actually, what I could do is I can move this to the back wall. Cool. So that's back there. And should be good. So this was the filter I took out of the biker's tank. We're gonna go ahead and use it in my goldfish tank. Put the lid back on. Good stuff. So for that DIY polisher, we're gonna go ahead and come back later tonight. Uh, hopefully it'll be able to collect some stuff, but um, yeah, we'll go ahead and wait and see. What's up guys? So it's the next day. I'm gonna go ahead and check up on this filter. Look at them. Look at them just chilling there. All right, let's go ahead and see what this filter has collected. All right, that's pretty interesting. So every night before I go to sleep, um, I will feed my biker some krill. Uh, I'll just throw it in there and whatnot. And I don't know if you can see it, but the filter actually caught a piece of krill and it actually caught all the little pieces of like uh, dried up krill too. One day and it took out a good amount of detritus that was in the water column. It's very interesting. Oh, the curl fell out. Catch this right here. So that was with that. Let me go ahead and take this out too. Oh. That's just from one day. And uh, when I took it out, uh, that's probably a cleaner way for me to do it, but uh, I took it out with the tongs and uh, it kind of like released all kinds of detritus in the water column. So there's definitely a cleaner way to do it, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys a quick example of what this water polisher can pick up in about one day. Can't believe it picked up a piece of krill though. That's nuts. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to clean this. So when it comes to the water polisher, you can either replace it or clean it. Um, I noticed that I, I noticed that um, polyfill doesn't really break up. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of like, spray it down and then kind of like squeeze off the excess water and it's kind of like recharged and you get to go again so look check it out brand new so yeah i'm pretty uh excited to see that the water polisher actually picked up a whole piece of krill and all the little remnants of krill so it's good it's very good and then to put it back it's just a matter of kind of stuffing it back in so it's like that I didn't plan this at all, but uh, it kind of worked out that there was uh, multiple pieces of filter floss in here. So you can just take off the top layer and then just replace it or wash that top layer. And then the bottom layer will still be intact. Uh, last night I was figuring out that um, if, if this piece of filter floss comes out and clogs my bulkhead, that might be an issue. So I went ahead and got a strainer and I attached it to my bulkhead. So there'll be no way for the filter floss to clog that up. But yeah, this is just a little video to show you guys how I converted a sponge filter into a water polisher. Sometimes uh, having a water polisher in your aquarium is good, but just make sure that you keep up with the maintenance and keep up with replacing and or cleaning the filter material so it's uh, as efficient as possible. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close this up and end this video off. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And peace, guys. <laughs>